How do you purchase your flights? By going directly to your favorite airline and grabbing the first flights you see for the dates you need? Or maybe you research prices on Skyscanner, Travelocity, Kayak, or any other aggregator to compare fares and book the cheapest flight for the dates that work. Maybe you don't trust your computer and call a travel agent. How do users get all these options? And exactly how do airlines distribute their tickets? Back in the 60s, making a flight reservation took multiple people and a mainframe computer to process. American Airlines and IBM pioneered automated flight distribution using the IBM 7090 computer. It was situated in Briarcliff Manor, New York, and housed all flight reservation data. That computer was connected to 1,500 American Airlines remote terminals across the country. To make a reservation, you contacted a travel agent, who then reached the airline by phone to reserve a seat. That system could process up to 84,000 telephone transactions per day. Its full name, Semi-Automatic Business Research Environment, was simplified to Sabre. Later, similar computers were adopted by most carriers, while Sabre became the leading flight distribution provider in the world. In the 70s, terminals were extended to travel agents' offices to free up manpower at airlines. This was the beginning of the era of global distribution systems, known as GDSs. Today, GDSs, large flight aggregators, collect flights from about 400 airlines and distribute them across travel agencies using their own application programming interfaces, or APIs. APIs are the main connectivity channels used for linking different software systems in the modern world. There are three major GDSs, Sabre, which became an independent business in 2000, Amadeus, established in 1987 by four European airlines, and Travelport, a UK-based GDS, formed through a merger of smaller providers. Besides air travel, GDSs now support hotel room distribution, train travel, cruises, car rentals, and even airport transfers. So, how exactly does GDS center distribution work? GDSs are normally connected directly to the heart of airline sales technologies, central reservation systems, or CRSs. A CRS is a software program that manages seat reservations on the airline side once a GDS requests a seat. But this connection channel doesn't cover scheduling information and pricing. To set timetables and prices, airlines must connect with two additional third parties. Airlines publish their prices on so-called ATPCO, or Airline Tariff Publishing Company. It's the main global source of fare information that further distributes prices across GDSs, online travel agencies, or OTAs, and price aggregators like Skyscanner. On top of that, airlines connect to scheduling providers such as Innovata and OAG. These technology companies supply the travel market with flight schedule, routing connection, and flight code info. Powerful middlemen, GDSs have become close to a monopoly on the air travel distribution market. For many years, they've been the main point of contact for both airlines and agents, including online travel agencies. Most travelers today research prices at OTAs, and about a third of travelers worldwide purchase tickets there. What's wrong with GDS center distribution? First problem is the lack of valuable customer data. As GDSs process bookings, most of the information remains in the hands of middlemen and doesn't allow airlines to track their customers and eventually adapt to their preferences. Second, limited ancillary support. Airlines receive very thin margins in the sale of their core services, carrying people from point A to point B. The main source of profit for many airlines is allowing you to choose seats, upgrade a class, take more luggage, get priority boarding, or order a better meal. While global distribution systems, APIs transmit key booking information to online travel agencies, ancillary support is usually limited. And perhaps the main problem is that airlines don't have full control over their inventory and the choice of a distribution channel. Some airlines, like Lufthansa, for instance, decided to combat GDS dominance and encourage people to buy tickets directly from their sites. Lufthansa even introduced an additional 16 euro or approximate $18 fee for each booking through GDS. 
Some low-costers, like Ryanair, tend to avoid GDS distribution entirely, opting for direct bookings from their websites. For instance, Ryanair, the major European carrier, discontinued its contract with Amadeus in December 2017. In 2015, IATA, or International Air Transport Association, introduced a new API standard for airlines called NDC, or New Distribution Capability. NDC allows airlines to build their own APIs and suggest them to GDSs, or entirely bypass this layer by connecting to online travel agencies directly. NDC standards support rich content, wide ancillary offers, and even personalization for every customer. Despite the opportunity. Airlines are slow to change. Today, only 65 airlines have adopted NDC one way or another, and GDSs are also trying to keep up with technology's pace, investing hundreds of millions in innovation. Curiously enough, all three are already incorporating NDC support in their products as they try to maintain their positions. Even though airlines, hotels, and other local service providers strive to avoid third parties and distribute their products directly, each year's growing number of travelers will be looking for reliable, comprehensive travel booking platforms. Services that allow you to plan your entire trip, from flights and accommodations to snacking at local eateries, will gain in popularity. But we don't know yet which path the industry will choose. 